with Opie's firing from Sirius XM, the Opie and Anthony show is completely finished. Unlike many people around my age, people outside of North America, I was an avid, and still am an avid fan of the ONA show, and it's sad to see that it's ended. I think it brought an, a true edginess, along with the likes of Howard Stern, to radio and entertainment that was just found hardly anywhere else. But the true way that the ONA show was successful was the likes of Anthony Cumia and Jim Norton and with other great guests such as Patrice O'Neill and Bill Burr coming on, providing such brilliant, witty commentary, opinions on a range of subjects, and certainly not being politically correct, arguing the hell out of each other, arguing the hell out of the media, whether it would be the right or the left, especially the left. But you would get such a, a brilliant dynamic between the three personalities, Opie Anthony and Jim Norton. See, they did used to get along. As they used to say, they would spread the virus, and it really was like that. If anybody would watch the ONA show, or listen rather, anybody who would listen to the ONA show really would... It's hard to properly pinpoint why I liked it, other than it was a true escapism, in, in that so much of other entertainment doesn't feel like you're talking with your friends. Even the edgy stuff, the edgy comedians, they're still with an extra point at the end of it. There's a, there's a nice little, there's, there's something rounded about it, or it's barbed, but it's all in good jest. But the ONA show really was shock jock radio, and they would push the envelope, and at times that would go too far, and they got fired several times. But ultimately, for me, it's actually fairly highbrow. <laughs> it is <laughs> fairly highbrow entertainment in that they would be so witty, they would riff so well with each other, they would have such a brilliant uh, array of takes on the news of the day, whereas most of the people would really just be given the same sort of opinions on the news, not adding much to it, certainly not adding much comedy to it, and again, most of their humour would be politically correct humour, even if they're saying things like cunt, ooh, to be, non to be edgy. There's nothing edgy about just swearing or having a go at the establishment folks or things like that. The ONA show would lambast everyone and that was the great thing about it, including themselves, routinely having a go at each other, having a go at each other's bombs and flubs and, and when, they, when they were tired, when they were not contributing enough. And of course it resulted in on-air true fights along with, I'm sure, many off-air fights I know on Reddit there's a lot of hate for Opie, but as far as I can see in here, Opie was actually very good at steering the ship. Not always, but sometimes he really did miss up and he would kill the flow and you're thinking, Jesus Christ, Opie, what are you doing? Surely even his family know that he's a dick, <laughs> right? But that is partly why it was such a good show. He helped f the, f the framework of the show with, in terms of the sense of humour that, that was going to be there. There's the sense of an edginess, of a danger there of not being perfect, not being nice people. But for me, well rounded human beings, we are bad. We're not all good. Why, why pretend we're all perfect little creatures and angels? Why don't we just, as they did, have a go at everyone in equal measure? Instead of just having a go at some people some of the time, or all of the time, have a go at everyone. And for me, that, that's, that's a good lesson we should take from the likes of the ONA show. Everyone should be lampooned, should be criticised. If you can add some humour, add some edgy, add some good analysis in there. Some of the Patrice O'Neill analysis is fucking amazing, will stand the test of time forever. And then he would just throw some, th some brilliantly barbed comments against people you shouldn't, feminists or whoever. But then you just know at the end of the day as well, they're not a completely awful human beings. Anthony sometimes pushes the envelope, <laughs> but I, I love him. He's an incredibly intelligent, funny guy, and he's not... He's not saying that he's perfect. With his upbringing the way he is, he's always going to be like that. OP similar. Jim Norton has a full array of complexities. He's a, he's a madman, but one of the funniest people in the world. And I will take some of the funniest people in the world with all their complexities, as I would take the Keith Moons of the rock world, being musical geniuses, with also the comebacks that you get. The Einsteins, with the comebacks that they had. He married his cousin. He didn't have a great first marriage. The, he would routinely forget his keys. <laughs> there is no perfect person. There are only endless amount of dull people who just don't particularly have great analysis or sense of humour. 
I don't, th I don't think that's the pinnacle. Lots of people are trying to push that now, but for me, the pinnacle is, is the whole package of a sense of humour. And that's what you really got with the O&A show that we simply don't get with the likes of Sam Roberts. Actually, listen to the guy. He doesn't offer anything. He says a lot, and he doesn't say anything. He, he pontificates as if he knows all these things, and he actually doesn't really say anything. He just he looks to dominate the conversation pointlessly in no particular direction. And it's, it's spread to Jim Norton now, who I'm afraid his stand-up is amazing. Jim Norton's stand-up is better than it's ever been. On the radio, it's, it's not the same. He was the perfect foil for O&A and being the third mic. With Sam Roberts, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't work. The OP show on its own is fine, some good energy, but again, not the, not the array of comedic talents that they had on their O&A show. And the Anthony Cumia show, I actually preferred when he had the old compound media uh, setup, and where he would be really edgy and you could find some clips on YouTube that I, I like that, it seemed more authentic to me, but still his show is great because he's a, he is a pro. He started out in construction, but Anthony Cumia is certainly a professional. He's excellent at interviewing and having the guests be uh, comfortable with him. He's had one great talk with Milo Yiannopoulos, with Lionel. Uh, he's, he's fantastic. Anthony's excellent. He, he greatly enhances the Chip, Chipperson podcast that we have with Jim Norton, which whenever Anthony's not there, the show, it, it's stunted. It, it's, it's not the same. You need someone who's going to slightly overly laugh at it because it's a, it's a show and, and Chip is a character to be laughed at. And you, you need to get it. It's, it's quite a modern comedy in that, in that it's an anti-comedy. It's not trying to be funny. And so you, you need people who will really get that and be enthusiastic with it to work. The straight man thing works at times as well, as Anthony does. But the likes of Sam Roberts, he's always being the fake straight man, which gets tiresome. I will say for Sam Roberts, I enjoyed on the O&A days when he would play the straight wrestling fan, and they were all having a go at Sam, and Sam thinks every wrestling storyline is, is uh, real. That was excellent, I thought he did that well. But the rest of the time, he, he just portrays this fake straight character that doesn't actually work very often, endlessly pontificating. Who would ever pontificate? without any substance. Listen, probably if you're a Sam Roberts fan, just listen to what he's actually saying. It doesn't say anything. There's nothing there. There's, n there's nothing of any substance, in my opinion. But hey, Sam Roberts had a brilliant time with, with WWE. But the Opie Anthony show would offer an escapism as well. Whether you think it should be like the real world or not, of course, it's mainly a fancy radio entertainment world. But in a, in a GTA fashion, of which they <laughs> offer their voices to some of the radio shows on that, it is a great escapism from the mundanity of life. How mundane are most people that you come across? <laughs> or that's the version that they have to put on, across of themselves at least. That's what society says you have to be to be a good person or to be intelligent. If you want to listen to O and A show, you must be awful. Just all they're like they're, they're truckers, right? But for, again, if you have an open mind to politically incorrect humour, you should really enjoy it because it has a go at everyone. It makes you feel comfortable. If we could all have that sort of sense of humour, couldn't we just all muck in so much better? That's, that's the ultimate lesson we should learn from politically incorrect humour. Don't be offended, don't play the victim with it. Hit back, they have a go, you, you hit the hell back. Who, who gives a shit at whatever they say about you? Have a go back. Of course you get a fan offended, it's automatic. Someone says something particularly hurtful to you, you're gonna, it's gonna get, get you back up. But the lesson that comedians have done is have a go back. Don't be a victim, don't play the victim, that's when the bullies strike even more. Be a bit stronger and we can earn each other's respect and even become friends with it all. So it looks like the ONA show is properly done, we'll have to see where OP goes now that he's been fired from Sirius. Wouldn't be surprised if he turns up on Compound Media, the Compound Network. But I think OP will want his own show as well, he won't want it to be the Anthony and OP show. <laughs> that's not in his nature. Amazing show, underrated show, there should be more of that spirit, whether you say they went too far at times, I'm sure they did, but the ultimate spirit of a free spirit, free comedy, free love of entertainment, and, and bouncing off each other, the, the, the riffing you got from Jim and Sam at times was, was as funny as you'll ever hear from anyone, the way they would crack each other up, Anthony's infectious laugh, Jim's brilliantly <laughs> offensive comedy and and with excellent characters from Stalker Patty to Lady Di, Bobo, Big A, endless fun bits that they had. We, it, was, it was one hell of an era. 
And with how the millennial style of comedy that we're getting now is, I'm not sure we'll actually see that style again. We certainly do see it in living rooms and pubs and schools and work. Everybody still has that sort of sense of humour, that honest, earthy sense of humour. Whether we're going to hit on the TV or the radio again seems unlikely, but sometimes things can be cyclical, they can come back around, and seeing as that style and that sense of humour is not going away anytime soon, hopefully never, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually it turns back around. Here's hoping. But to O and A, you gave me a lot of laughs. You continue to give me lots of laughs. I will always keep listening to the old O and A shows. The escapism that you get from it will always be there. Take with it with a pinch of salt, but also learn some lessons from how we can be comfortable with each other from the Opie and Anthony show. Thanks for everything, guys.